in any event, I suspect pricing will, everything else will come down forever against Bitcoin. If you understand what that means, then you're going to accumulate it. You won't worry about pricing movements and pricing. You'll just, you'll use it as a time to accumulate. Jeff Foods, thanks so much for taking your time. How are you doing, man? Great pleasure Great. to see you again. <laughs> you, you too, Kevin. Nice to see you. Okay, Jeff, um, it's been a while. Um, I want to sort of um, do a reality check with you first. Um, yeah, as you know, you know, I'm in Austria um, with my girlfriend and uh, our, our 11 month daughter is going to turn one year next year. So everything, you know, is great. <laughs> and uh, the thing is that I want to talk to you about, you know, um, what's going on, you know, around us and uh, how, uh, you know, the speed at which uh, concerns me, you know, the whole development, because there's a law which is going to take, uh, which is going into effect starting February uh, uh, regarding mandatory vaccination. And um, not that I want to, you know, like focus on this topic right today, but I want to like, you know, have your thoughts, uh, you know, uh, how you analyze this whole thing in the context of, of, you know, the great reset or monetary inflation and what have you. So, so they're going to penalize. I mean, they took out the part where it would be sort of imprisonment if you don't pay the penalty. It, it starts at, I think, 600 euros and it go goes up to thousands of euros. So we're going to, of course, take legal action, you know, legal complaints. There's more and more lawyers and people, you know, waking up, going to the streets. And uh, uh, there's even a sort of a political party forming for, you know, human rights, like principal things, you know. Um, you're in Canada, I guess. Yeah, I am. I'm yeah. In yeah, I was I, I was in Austria about four weeks ago i know i know and i wanted to come there because i'm in a different state of austria so you know with the baby and everything else is difficult but I, but i watched it afterwards and it was really a, 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 a very very interesting talk you gave and um i think uh, the people loved it um what was the reaction by the way um it was it was incredible uh i think in four different countries politicians and on in four different countries asked me to essentially repeat that speech to their constituents um the uh so so i think it turned a lot of heads i think was there someone from the uh, austrian national bank or the sort of central bank of austria Where uh, yeah they were it was it was held at the central bank uh, and and there were were a bunch of central bankers, uh, not just Austrian central central bank, but a bunch of central bankers in the room. So there's a the right audience to talk about the macro problem that's the, uh, that's happening. And and I, I'll tell you, Kevin, um, many of them are completely unaware. They 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 don't see it at all. They think productivity is low. Um, in the world, and they need to get up productively, but productivity by printing money. And so, so unfortunately, you have a whole. It's it, and it's easy to say that the whole system is manipulated, and there's a whole bunch of people at the top um, that are manipulating it. Well, that is true for some people. Um, largely, what I've learned, it's it just it's ignorance. Why is that? I mean, why is there not a, sort of an awareness of what's going on? Where does this come from? I mean, okay, so why um, uh, why did Sears, which was one time the biggest retailer in the world, that was that became the biggest retailer in the world from a catalog business, miss Amazon? <laughs> it's it, and again, when your business is constructed in a way to be able to gain value a different way it's hard to see what how, how fast technology is changing the rules and that's all that's happened here you've had technology changing the rules and a whole bunch of people within the system unable to see it now on top of that system there are there some bad actors in in here that do see it of course um but uh but i would say predominantly the course is is what what i just talked about you have Two, two systems crashing into each other, one driven by technology, one driven by um, monetary easing, inflation, 
um, and they cannot coexist without concentrating all power uh, uh, power into the hands of few or the state. And so your talk about what will happen with COVID or what will happen with global warming or what will happen with any other symptom of this issue is is the state will consolidate power and remove individual rights and freedoms. I wish that wasn't true, um, but it is that that is the path that this system takes us on, um, because it and, and it and and while most and most people don't realize that they're actually making it happen faster by marching on the streets. And so, what would what would what would a government do? They hire more, more police officers. Right. They'll hire more military to be able to enforce that. Um, when people break windows or, <coughs> or steal, um, steal, what happens is, is it, other people vote to remove their own individual rights and freedoms and empower the state more. That's, and this is really important, really, really important, more important than, than just about anything else people talk about. Because when you live in a system with um, with incompatible kind of, if you just said physics, incompatibility of two systems colliding with each other, then, then that system can't change itself. And, and imagine what would happen if somebody, if, if the entire globe today, we'll look at the stock market sell off right now. Uh, um, it, it, just because uh, you know, Powell said he's going to tighten. He's not going to tighten. He might tighten for a while, but the entire system we live in all wealth all functioning economy everything um is sitting on top of that credit-based system and if you allow it to unwind you unwind all wealth at the same time and everything fails so <clears throat> so unfortunately policymakers are stuck they're 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 trying they're pushing harder and harder they don't know what kind of what we're talking about but many don't know that uh, they're making the whole system worse and more fragile as we do it. Uh, but, but the output of that is a concentration of power in the hands of a few in government. Um, I don't want to go into, you know, uh, theories or conspiracy theories, but is there, do you think it's very convenient to push for these tyrannical measures now, uh, especially, you know, considering what's going on, you just <clears throat> mentioned, you know, the whole, uh, unwinding thing and inflation and hype inflation. I mean, we already have to a certain degree hype inflation, don't we? In some um, essential like products or yeah. Uh, so, 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 absolutely. Um, and, and and to see this truth uh, now, uh, obviously, we're not going down deep because I'm assuming your audience knows a lot of my work and and has listened to stuff that we so we can start in a spot that we left off on um but it, it, if you just imagine that system cannot stop without collapsing the entire system so it has to keep printing and when you have corruption and money when you have theft in money which is just a transfer from some people to other people and that transfer needs to get more and more and more because of the because of technology moving the other way so that theft has to be greater and greater and greater what you call hyperinflation or is that theft right or that um and the rate has to increase has to increase um then when you have corruption and money and money is just an abstract concept for our time you must have corruption everywhere in society and so what would if you look through that lens and you look through that um, out at society and then you and and then some people realize that what i just said is true a hundred percent true then it's easy to understand through that that lens if i can't trust money and money is the most important thing kind of it drives all other human action from productivity to uh, to, to the works if i can't trust money if somebody's lying to me about money what else are they lying to me about? But, and here's the but, when, when conspiracy theory, theorists come up with all of these things, some of which also might be true, they actually empower the state more because they're marginalized. Because they're marginalized by, by and I'll use global warming as an example. Um, global warming, if, if you believe in global warming or climate change, and it doesn't much matter, 
but um, it, you have to ask yourself this question. Um, how many people believe in it versus not believe in it? So if you're out there saying global warming doesn't exist, um, is, uh, is that a fast way to get marginalized by the state? Probably. And you're in a small group of people just get overwhelmed. If you, if you tie the picture that if you believe in global warming, can global warming be solved through an inflationary monetary system that must grow forever on a finite planet? Then you force then, then it's, you force the people who believe in global warming to see it can't be solved the same, the same uh, in in the way they think it can be solved, um, and so it's just a two two different ways. And so in one way marginalizes people and gives more power to the state. One way brings more people to this to to your side. Okay. Um... That's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, global warming, climate crisis, all this, it's based sort of on a fundamental premise that uh, it's man-made, right? <laughs> that's, I mean, the root, that's the sort of the theory or the, the alleged science behind it, that it's man-made. Is that... Well, so, so and again, we're jumping all over the place here, yeah. but, it, but, but you need a narrative for, uh, for people to believe. Mm -hmm. That, uh, that that you can print money forever. You need a you need a narrative because otherwise people are going to ask, why? What is the basis of our time if you print money forever? And global warming is a really good narrative, right? Because a lot of people believe in global warming, but the, but you you could just say really simply, inflation equals climate change. And and and. I'll give you I'll give you a very real example and and one that will accelerate wealth and and I'm part of that wealth but 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 I'm a, a chairman of a board called cubic farms that uh, that company has created automated grow systems vertical farming that are containerized and already already today 2021 are are lower cost quite a bit lower cost Um and higher nutrient value and everything else, and by localizing lettuce, lettuce in a in a container. Why? Because of the automation and the light density over the lettuce. Some some uh, some uh, some uh, patents that they hold on on how to how to do this. But it's already lower cost. So that lower cost and higher abundance, you should see what's coming out of these containers. You should see what's the, the, the automation here and what happens. So that, that has now created a break in the market. And the market structure of that, because people want lower price, higher quality, everybody starts using it. And so that is deflationary deflation because it gives us abundance and we choose it because it gives us more value. And so that's what's happening in the company, really exciting company. So what's the, and that's one tiny little part of this whole picture that I am talking about. So as, what, as that's getting more and more efficient and what artificial intelligence and, and what we can do in that company to make it more and more efficient, it's already created a structural break from track farming and track farming, pesticides, massive uh, massive machines, lots of labor and everything else for track farming, and then the distribution to get that, that, uh, that lettuce across the world. So high labor, high labor costs, higher and higher labor costs, higher transportation costs. And now you have, an, you have something that's more efficient and arguably better for the planet because it doesn't require um, transportation, doesn't require anything else, so it can be localized at a commercial scale. So it gives a it more. So what is the offset as that, as that starts to reach the market and scale and give more value? The only way to, to hold the entire system together because that deflationary effect will collapse our system if prices don't rise. So, so the only way to offset that effect is to print more money to make prices rise. What will happen with that? Transportation prices rise, labor costs rise, all of these prices rise. What happens to cubic farms? It gets better as a result. It magnifies the gain. So more and more labor comes out 
because this company is growing so fast and giving more value as the other system is getting more expensive. So what happens to that? Governments need to print more money. You can print more money. It's an isolated example of what's happening overall. Um, and you can see it every, you can see it everywhere. That's what's happening on your phone. That's what's happening everywhere. Auto, that automation or that technology is driving into a base layer of everything we do. And it's taking away more and more industries. And as government prints, they consolidate power into very few hands as a result of that print, printing and society is left out. As they do that, the very thing they're saying they're printing for climate change they're making it happen. They're, they're making it happen because you need more labor, higher prices, two cars, more things forever at an escalating scale to be able to pay for those higher prices. And with that, the environmental pollution, uh, as I would call it, I mean, uh, right? The exactly. Environmental damages. Right. right. Yeah. Whether, whether it's climate change or environmental pollution right. or the 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 uh, the damage. Um, you can't grow forever on a finite planet. Um, it's, and specifically, way more important than that is um, you can grow, but growth turns into negative, is the productivity gain from that growth is negative GDP. How, how much GDP today is from, a, from your calculator app? Right? Or, your, or, or, or photos or, or things on your phones. It reduces the GDP because it becomes free. That's that's the that's the point. Okay, so let me tie this in. Um, so we are living, you know, in in uh, more or less like privileged, like Western countries, as I am, you know, in Austria. But uh, it's it's really mind-boggling that this is like the first country. I want to go back to my first question: like, how do we? Uh, we, we, we I want to talk to you about Bitcoin, of course. But how can Bitcoin? in the midterm or, or long term, help us free us from defund the state. And because this is, this is, this is what it's, you know, the separation of money and state, but also the defunding of these mono, monopolies on, you know, aggression, violence, coercion, and tyranny. Is so if every single person standing up to the, uh, for their individual rights and freedoms, just bought Bitcoin instead and held Bitcoin, um, you would transfer that power from, to the individual from the state. It, that's all it would take. So instead of holding up signs, marching on by Bitcoin, that's literally it. Every single person you see wanting their freedoms back, remembering a um, buy, buy and hold Bitcoin. And is way more important than the wealth it might gain for you. It's, it, it's a transition from one system that cannot fix itself. It's impossible to another system that, uh, that can. On the other side of the, the system, that literally bridge you're building to another system um, is, is a really hopeful world because it's congruent, it's, it's congruent with the best in us. In, in humans, we have kind of this angel and devil and, and, and if, if, if our system is built on theft and fraud and, and people know that, they will lean in and they'll get closer to that system. They'll get closer to, 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 that, uh, to that system, which has a negative externality somewhere else. And because there's way more people than, than in the, in the system, those people who rise up will overturn that system and, and, and give some dictator power, give them un unequivocal power to fix it. And then you put power into somebody else who does this exact same thing. The, um, unfortunately, I wish this wasn't true, but if you look through history, these, these debt resets happen and they change currencies. And, and then, then you elect governments that say, we promise we won't do it again. Um, and then they do it again. Um, and so it's a function of, uh, it's a function of essentially inflation and money which you could argue was a requirement for money, not a requirement, it was never a requirement, but, it, but what ended up happening is, is on gold, you had to better build a credit-based system on top of gold to get velocity of money. And then that credit-based system had to grow over time. It had to keep growing. 
and then you would have, and then you'd get to a point where, where it couldn't be paid back and everybody knew it couldn't be paid back. So you changed the rules of capitalism to essentially pick the pocket of, of one part of the population to give to another part, part of the population to, to save the system. And then when you did that, when and this throughout history, it's not, it, um, it's it, it also in 2008. And when you did that, you essentially codified the rules that it's okay to cheat into capitalism. And so what would you do if you're a hedge fund and you absolutely know that the government has to blink and they will, they will print even if, so you make a bet, you know, you're going to get bailed out. What would you do? You'd make more of those bets. And, and each time you got bailed out, you would essentially rob society there because inflation is wage deflation and savings deflation. So a whole bunch of people, pe people's the income didn't go up to, ma to match that. They, they had their pocket picked as a result. And, and, they and they start to rise up blaming people when it's really a system. I mean, it is mind-boggling, Jeff, uh, Jeff, because I, I, just, I recently talked to Greg Foss, you know, he's, he's uh, also talked, you know, we mentioned you, of course, and he said that, I mean, he agrees with me, you know, that, that I told him, you know, in the European Union, uh, pretty much everything is, is broke, is, is bankrupt, insolvent, or whatever you call it. Uh, I mean, uh, mature for crashing. So, you know, the pension fund, I mean, it's everywhere like that. It's just mind boggling because when you think, when you look at the numbers, you know, or how many whatever dollars have been printed in the last two years, I think it's 40% or something. And you see, you look at the pension funds that broke, you look at the banks, you look, uh, are we at the peak or are we, where are we? I mean, why is this, uh, is this still able to procrast procrastinate itself or delay itself? Is it like, like uh, without going into specul speculation, but is it something that that somehow occupies your mind sometimes? Like how 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 long can this go on? It can go on a long time. It, um, it can go on long. It, it, it can come down, and that's it, it. It can go on a long time. People will vote for that system if you want to know that. Um, so, and 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 this is super important that many Bitcoiners miss. Human nature is a it is a hard, if you believe something and somebody pushes against you and or pushes against you and um, then you'll lock in your beliefs typically and if you believe that your pain is caused by um, by somebody else put a put a picture uh, picture on it those rich people that we need to tax them more you won't even question Bitcoin you'll think it's solvable by taxes. Um, you'll create an you'll create an enemy, and then what happens when what happens if governments say okay we're going to stop printing and you have a credit collapse and that credit collapse people forget that credit collapse is the system it's everything it's your it's your supermarkets it's your banks it's your everything else so the credit collapse starts happening and and the first stages of the credit collapse are stock markets fall by 2% then 5% then 10% then then 20% and this seeps and and then the next stage is the bank closes down and you can't uh, you can't get your money and the next stage is uh, is riots on the street what happens to people in that system do you think they say oh I know this is it's Bitcoin. I'm calm and everything else, and and and, and I just I just go buy my Bitcoin. I'm good. No, they rise up and they vote for somebody else to to say take back that power, and 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 it's it's those people's fault, and they're led to revolution and war through the exact the exact same thing. Unfortunately, I, I wish I didn't have to say this, but unfortunately, we are easily manipulated. We. If we, if we believe something, we won't question that very often. Few people think in first principles and can check their ego and look at, some, look at something deeper um, than their beliefs to be able to question that. It's actually what, what's so cool about the Bitcoin community. Many of those people had to go through that path to be able to understand Bitcoin. And so they're, they're, uh, they're at, at, giant advocates because they understand this at a level that most people don't. 
But if you look at the general population, you think most people understand this. They don't. And so, so as, as, a, as, a, as a consequence in that general population, what, what you'll see is people will make the state, they give the state more power as a result of, out of these, these structural problems. You know, Jeff, uh, yeah, you, 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 you said something really important. You said that people are so easily manipulated. Um, and it's not only that, I mean, the whole system, and especially now, you know, with this whole, uh, uh, I don't know, brainwashing going on. There's a mass formation, mass, mass psychosis going on, you know, and I talked to Greg Foss also about this. And, and there's, you know, experts who, who have analyzed this, this uh, you know, how, how this whole thing evolves, uh, this mass psychosis. So, you know, this, this obsession with fear uh, that you can see in the people is, is, is really staggering. It's when you, you know, there, people are so fearful. It's like, I mean, we're talking about like a, a so-called virus, uh, a pandemic, which is not a pandemic, you know, and people are so fearful, you know, not only, you know, people, you know, like friends and families coming with masks and, and we're like, you know, where does, where, where, you know, where's our child going to grow up with? I mean, I mean, the damages and the collateral damages and the psychological, emotional, economical damages that have been incurred, it's, it's so crazy to think about this. And, you know, and then, you know, we don't have the luxury right now to philosophize, you know, about um, all kinds of things uh, around Bitcoin. But we are asking ourselves and many others who might talk to, I mean, Aus people from Austria or German speaking countries, they, they're in the same position. They're Bitcoiners or, you know, and they don't know what to do. You know, where should they emigrate to if things get really bad? I mean, El Salvador, Mexico, Paraguay. And, you know, we're talking about like average plebs, you know, who who don't who are not lucky, you know, to have like a financial pillow or cushion, you know, to say, okay, I'm just going to pack my stuff and leave, uh, you know, and fly somewhere and, and establish myself somewhere, uh, especially when you have children, when you have family. Uh, do you know where I'm going with this? It's like, yeah. uh, let me, let me jump, jump in. Jump in. So, so I want to start with something first before we go to, um, and here's what I want to start with. Just about the entire world says, I'm not impacted it, by it but those other people are. And, and if you look out at the world, just, to, just if you're not impacted by, by this, then what your life looks like, measure your mirror about how you feel every day and, and, and the abundance in your life and, and how many open doors there are, because there's infinite possibilities. If that's true, um, then you're not influenced by it. Um, so you, because you can, you can control the fear. You can understand this is, uh, this is a game. It has to play out. I hate the game, but it has to play out and there's infinite opportunities and you'll spend more time um, in, in hope than in fear. That, that can, and in me, and by the way, when I look at my life and I look at that, that's where I live. It's just like, and I don't mean to say that as, as gloating or ego or anything else. It's just, it's how I choose to live life. It doesn't stop me from also saying, how do other people look at the world and what, how did they choose life? Right. And what is their, what does their world look like? And so I, I can understand, I can live in two different thoughts at the same time. If I have all that it can look like this, could it look like this for other people who could think that think this? But I guess I would just caution, it's so easy. How many people, it, 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 I'll use a simple example. You ask people if they're a better than average driver, how many people would say, no, I'm worse than average. <laughs> everybody thinks it's everybody else, but not them. Everybody thinks that. And, and, and it's just simply not true. If, this, if these things impact other people, they impact you too. And how and 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 stepping out of that, meditating if you need to, stepping out of that to say, how do I allow this to not impact me? Is part of the reason that um, that my family traveled for for three months this year and just just checked out and and, and traveled because I could work from anywhere and and I wanted to, and it was really good for for my wife because you're out of the news cycle. We were meeting people all over the world, and it, and it didn't, and, um, and and it was a total change. Um, so, 
So that's probably the biggest part. It's everybody else. Now, from a position of hope, because people don't move from fear to fear. And there's a lot of people that would look at Bitcoin through fear. There would be, they're, they're, in a, they're being paralyzed by a system that's getting worse and worse and they don't know. And, and so they'll, what they're, what they're thinking is I need to kick over the monopoly board, right? I'm going to break it down and, and that, and that will likely accelerate. And, and then, um, and then there will be people protecting the monopoly board from those people saying it's those people's fault. Um, and that's why we just have to keep going a system, a system problem to this magnitude cannot fix itself. No matter who you elect, no matter paint a picture of anybody, there is no person that could fix the system from the system. Um, and it's, it, it, it's too far, it's too far gone. So a new system has to emerge. And that's why, that's why uh, what I, and you've probably heard me say this, um, what's happening with Bitcoin in that emergent system is everyone, every person that's talking about it, holding it, it, buying it, telling their friends to buy it is literally creating a bridge to the other side. And that bridge is getting stronger and stronger and stronger and wider and wider and wider. And more people are walking across the bridge. And as they're walking across the bridge, they're creating the new reality that we are going to, to, to live in. Yes, the people that walk across the bridge early and hold on to this will, will have more, more wealth in that new system. But that new system, the, 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 the biggest part about that new system is that every single person, you could hate Bitcoin, and you still benefit from it because uh, be, because of the system change that is congruent to where, where we're going. And what I mean by that is if prices fall their natural course because they have to, because you have a, have a hard cap on money, and that money can gain any velocity it needs to because you have a 10 minute window that it can, uh, um, it can it, it, because it's technology instead of gold, Right, that uh, and so you can gain any velocity you want, and what that means is, is prices fall forever. And and so even if you hate Bitcoin, you are sharing in the abundance of prices falling forever because of Bitcoin, and that's what the and 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 so so you could scream at it all you want. It keeps it in the no news more and everything else. Uh, the biggest thing I think we need to think about is how to talk from a position of hope instead of fear, because people are living in a perpetual fear um, to get them to get people to the other side, or at least investigate Bitcoin for what it is rather than what they think it is. Wow. Yeah. Um, do you see, okay. Um, I want to like um, transition like to this um, really important topic. Like, uh, okay. When we talk about like free private cities and, and um, or countries like El Salvador, um, do you see like an economy evolving? You know, especially now with with these volcano bonds, and, and I mean, I guess they're using all this these volcano bonds or this this kind of uh, uh, financing to to build infrastructures, uh, be it, you know Bitcoin City or you know uh, the the. Uh, or anywhere, you know, it doesn't have necessarily to be in El Salvador. But do you see like El Salvador is one of the first countries to to really showcase this example of how the world could look like in a deflationary environment? Um, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And and why would they be first is the more important point. If the the te technology emp empowers people left out of an of a system. That's actually is the most critical thing you think you would think about in technology, any technology evolution, is it changes the rules so radically and the and it changes the price and the in the rules so radically that the, the people most blocked out from the old system are advantaged by the new system. And they start building to the new system. So, so the first uh, I've said this multiple times, but the first suppliers on Amazon were not in Walmart stores. They were the ones that couldn't get into Walmart stores. And, 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 and so what ends up happening is a new monopoly is built 
um, because of be, because of the lower cost transaction costs. The entire internet itself was that happening, and it killed a whole bunch of monopolies that, uh, as a result of making communication seamless and easy around uh, around the world. And we could we and on top of that, we could do things like this that we couldn't do before, and it gave us more value. That's what's happening in the in, in, uh, that's what ha- is happening in Bitcoin specifically. And it's and so if you're a country that has been locked out of the financial system, and you have to price your labor in U.S. dollars, and you have to compete against a, a, a power that can um, that that has way more of an economy than you, and you have to price in U.S. dollars, how could you ever grow your economy in that in that type of system? You're you're blocked out of the system. Um, wor- worse. If, if you think about this, U.S. essentially doesn't have to pay for energy because their energy is priced, energy is priced in U.S. dollars or oil is priced in U.S. dollars and they can print more of it and everybody else has to pay for it. So it gives an unfair advantage to, to certain countries over other countries. Now, that's kind of what I'm getting is the monopoly countries have an advantage in uh, um, in the way the world was constructed. And there's a whole bunch of countries that have a disadvantage. So it's easy to see through that lens that if you reduce cost to a totally different degree, like the internet itself, then an entire industry can grow on top of that different, different cost. And that's what's happening in El Salvador and it'll happen in many more countries. And then if you, if you then talk about the experiments or the El Salvador bond or the private city, it doesn't matter if these experiments work or not. Um, I suspect many of them will, um, but there were a lot of experiments on top of the internet that didn't work, that blew up, but the, the internet itself just got stronger and stronger and stronger. And people learned from those experiments to what to do next. How to how to how to how to make that better? So, in that example, you'd need to look at Bitcoin as a primary layer. It's it's TCP/IP. It's the internet itself, and on top of that, Lightning and and air, all of the different experiments that are going to happen to em- make the, to emerge are actually just making the entire protocol stronger and stronger and stronger as more and pe- more people race to great value for other people on top of that system. I mean, I see El Salvador really has a huge potential. I mean, I'm really looking forward to other smaller countries like whatever Paraguay or other Latin American or even African nations, you know, uh, to to go the same path, a similar path like El Salvador and attract, like, I think it has a huge potential to attract people like us, you know, like who are in Austria and, you know, and and, uh, being frightened because of, yeah, this whole, tyrannical measures uh, and, and and I mean the last pillar is is the judicial system we'll see if that works out if that doesn't work out then you know it just we're just a fig leaf and and we can forget the whole system in, in yeah but given just ask yourself that and and, and um, specifically tied to if we go back to the beginning of this conversation um, can just laws exist on corrupt money no <laughs> the, whole, the whole system is so whole, inherently the, corrupt, you know. Exactly. The, the whole system has to fail. The, the whole system has to change the laws to retain the power. Um, forget who's in the system. And again, that's why it's so important that people are, they're, they're talking about people and they're, people are marching all over the, all over the place against those people. And you're creating this tension around the world. And that fear that you're talking about is that tension. Um. And it will accelerate because people are, need somebody to blame. It's a system problem. It's a system problem that just, it cannot be solved. You can expect laws to get, uh, you can expect laws to change. You can expect the Fed to lose its independence and get overtaken by, um, uh, by, the, tra- uh, by, uh, by the government because it has to, because people will vote for that to, to happen. People will give up their individual rights and freedoms to to control this, the system and they'll do it in a faster and faster rate thinking it's just a little bit this time and this will fix it and this will fix it and they'll make the entire system 
and, and um, so so step out. That's that's why if you understand what Bitcoin is, and if you it's a new system, it's a totally new system, and you can't change the system from 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 the system, then then it's a different it's a totally different message than than leaning into that fear. I'm just thinking, you know, Jeff, I mean, if I was the state or the government, you know, you're scaring off people. People would just, you know, uh, take their wealth or, you know, sell the assets, sell the real estate, put it into Bitcoin and just uh, uh, migrate to somewhere else. You know, I mean, this is uh, this is this is something that somehow I don't know. I, I just don't understand that that they're they're literally like scaring off people they're you know like people who would who would otherwise be investing money or you know entrepreneurs or building businesses why are doing this i think this is suicidal yeah and it, it um in a smaller example every, every country that goes through this um does the same thing as the best people leave that, that country and they move they immigrate to a different country that that is individual rights and freedoms or they try to get into a different country that's in as individual rights and freedoms in a market-based economy the problem today is every single country doesn't have that it's just a low and it's getting worse so 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 what you asked before is where, well, except for El Salvador, um, but where do I go that has that? And you're going to see more and more, uh, more and more countries, just because of game theory, competing for uh, for people, competing competing for uh, labor capital and the be and the and, and the best capital, and that capital is Bitcoin. People are going to be competing for it, and they're, and, and they're going to make laws that are. Um, that protect people's rights based on Bitcoin so they can keep them because you could get on a plane anywhere that didn't exist. Um, that did that, that mobility did that, uh, that mobility didn't exist um, before Bitcoin or it didn't exist like it does in, uh, in Bitcoin where you, if you remember 12 words, you can go anywhere and nobody can stop you. Um, the, and it used to, people thought they were safe because, and they had all of their wealth in a country. And what they did is they were getting richer and richer, buying more and more assets in that country, like housing, or, and they were embedding themselves and they were creating more and more risk for themselves as the inevitable happened in that country. If you look at Lebanon today, I don't know if you, the value of your real estate helps you if you can't get out of uh, what's happening today in Lebanon. Same thing that's starting to happen in Turkey, Venezuela, um, and, and, and the likes. So, that's coming all around the world. And, and through that lens, people are thinking, what they think is safe is not safe at all. The tail risk is different than, than they think. Bitcoin in that is, is not just an asymmetric bet uh, to the upside. I believe it's actually the safest asset on the, on the planet today. Yeah, it's something that, uh, yeah, it's, I think people are slowly waking up to this fact, but uh, it's, it's um, yeah, I, I guess the pain point hasn't been reached. I don't know. Um, Wait, so no, but the point the point is, the pain point has been reached for a lot of people, but it's locked them into their existing narrative, which 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 is blaming somebody else. So that 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 pain point that's I think that's actually the the, the point more specifically. When Bitcoiners, when when we. Um, don't look at that pain and don't understand what people are doing as a result of that. Um, it's harder for them to see it. They'll lock into their narrative. They'll lock it. They'll believe. Look, uh, what you started with. Um, effectively, what you'll believe is conspiracy theories everywhere. Let's burn down government. Right. That's what what you'll you'll a whole bunch of people will uh, will, will believe. And they um, and they will be um, pitted against uh, society, making it worse and worse and worse. Right, right. Um, Jeff, uh, you you mentioned I think energy. Before I forget that question uh, from a, from my cousin, um, he's a Bitcoin. He said. Let me just read you that question. I believe he is. Uh, I believe Jeff is a proponent of pricing energy in Bitcoin, but I'm curious to know his opinion about the transition path 
of the energy market. The green energy market is heavily subsidized at the moment and there's no sign of slowing down, especially in Europe, which has led to the point that manufacturers cannot even fulfill the order intakes, which is one of the main factors of highest energy prices in some European countries like Germany and Denmark. At the same time, the competitors in the market have to compete to lower their cost of energy to be able to survive. How do you see the transition of pricing energy in a different unit will be playing out with the existence of the current system, which is manipulating the market principles by their cheap subsidies? So, so it's almost the same thing I said about the inflate the, the cubic farmers example, and the, the and 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 um, in this case, what what your uh, your cousin's asking is. In that example, they're also printing money to lower the cost of some certain items so that they can drive the drive the industry uh, to renewables. Um, I think in that example, because because we're so so early in the beginning of it, but but if you think about how the U.S. priced oil and energy, right? So or, or price oil, which is energy in U.S. dollars, and became the standard of the world. So the U.S. dollar would have broken down in 1971 had that not been the case, but essentially you offer protection to Saudi Arabia in trade for pricing oil. And, and then you make sure you do that everywhere and all the oil is priced in US dollars. And to do that, essentially, effectively, you get free energy, everybody else pays for energy. Um, and you use that to be able to build your war machine, to be able to make sure you have lane access and nobody gets off that because people need to pray. If other people start pricing in other currencies, that breaks down. And that works for, and that works for a long time and it builds this. And then, um, and then China's, uh, then China grows into a superpower largely because of a, tra a trade and balance, cheap labor, uh, cheap labor on one side, consumers on manufacturing on one side, consumers on the other side. One, one input is cheap labor. One input is um, pay people a bunch of money so they can buy. You can't keep paying people a bunch of money um, because it's it, that loan keeps growing and growing and growing. And then, and, but China's buying your bonds. China's keeping your rates low because they're buying your, your bonds. And then one day China wakes up, 2016 is that day, and they say, just a second, there's no way the US can pay us back in real terms. Impossible. So they can't pay us back in real terms. So they stop buying the bonds. And, and China instead goes and buys assets around the world, <laughs> like rare earth mines and everything else. And it starts the tension <laughs> Of this uh, 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 of this system, and and then um, and, and, and that accelerates. Now the U.S. has to buy their own bonds, mm -hmm. and, they keep on, and, and they have to monetize that debt, and it gets worse and worse. So you have to ask yourself through that lens: the oil producers say, saying, "Wait, am I going to get paid for oil in dollars that are worth twenty percent less next year?" or 30% less next year or 50. And at some point, that whole thing's going to break. Well, that's happening. Well, that whole thing's happening. At, an, at a different lens, energy is moving everywhere. Your volcano bonds is a good example. It's just energy. Um, in BC, I, I, I realized that we have so much hydropower that they turned off a whole bunch of dams. So the, 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 the BC Hydro, the, the central utility, will not take the power in because it's so low cost that they need to make some, make money. So, and that's creating a whole bunch of market imbalances in um, so they can make more money and pay for infrastructure on other uh, other things. So, energy already, if you looked at the actual energy, what it would be in a free market is already reducing and reducing in price. And what's happening with these alternative sources of energy, which are everywhere, um, uh, stranded energy, they're starting to price in Bitcoin. And those Bitcoin miners are holding energy or Bitcoin on their balance sheet because they know that. And they know it's going to be valued more over, to, over time. Otherwise, they would be selling that 
um, in, into market to fund the, their operations. And that transition will speed up. And it's really early. Most of the energy of the world today is still, uh, still oil. A bunch of it is still coal. So it's really, uh, really early, but it'll accelerate through this, uh, through this. And that, and, and some energy, um, so if you're saying subsidized energy and, and something that doesn't, so doesn't have an economic benefit, it'll be way later until it does, or people will invest a bunch of money into it that is productive capital um, because they believe that it'll have a, a better return. But on a, on a free market and what Bitcoin's doing, it's going to move there anyways, and it's, uh, it's just a matter of time. Especially when an unreliable, what do you call it, like unsustainable energy forms, like whatever would it be at the moment, you know, solar wind, which is unreliable, is being heavily subsidized. And now I think a few countries are now pushing or, or uh, you know, they, they, they're seeing, they're recognizing the opportunity to go into more. I mean, I'm a total proponent of nuclear energy if it's done right, you know, and with the standard, you know, the best uh, uh, sort of standard of technology. Um, I think some 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 countries are pushing what which I have read about. You know, the, uh, they're pushing in, you know the, the nuclear technologies. Would you would you agree? I mean, is that yep. the way to yeah go? yeah it's it's a good clean energy in it, and 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 it's a, it's a it's a great energy. Now the capital mm -hmm. cost to do it and the time, time um, the time to do it I think is a big, big deal. All the while, by the by the way, I'm close to some of these other industries and in solar specifically. There's a whether it's this innovation or other innovations, but there's an innovation right now that uh, that uh, that that I'm really close to the company that increases um, the uh, the power transfer, the power transmitted from twenty percent to fifty percent. So you're going to have some major major changes with advancing technology that render some of the assumptions that people are making today uh, useless. That's what I, but I mean, the market's going to de decide this and the market is deciding it on Bitcoin. Um, one is solar and, um, and other energy is actually a good thing for, for, for a utility because, because Bitcoin can take up the slack in a, um, as that trend uh, that transition happens oh great great um so uh, jeff i want to respect the time um just to wrap up let me just ask you you know this this topic which really fascinates me I mean, because we talked you know with uh, jeff uh with uh, greg Foss about jason laurie you know who's uh who is in the space yeah. force and writing about this you know yeah, I'm, I'm close i'm close to jason exactly yeah so he's I mean, I have a lot of hope uh, that he could somehow initiate or uh, promote this this idea within the military industrial complex uh, to 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 finally comprehend, you know, Bitcoin as as the best, you know, most efficient defense technology. You know, could that in the, you know consequentially could that eventually hopefully unleash the technologies which which have been developed and used and uh, uh, in a more or less let's say compartmentalized way in the mil within the military industrial complex for civilian use you know what i'm what i'm getting at like is that the path to go like finally to to make because if we want to have like a human civilization we need you know other infrastructures technological infrastructures um and and i I think your question just clarify me. There's a whole bunch of technology that government sees before uh, before he, we see it, and will that open that up? And so, so to, today um, we live in a in a competition based world, and that competition I mean uh, uh, almost a zero sum game now. If you if you have manipulated money, you do have a zero sum game. Somebody wins, somebody loses, because because of the manipulated money. In a free market, the winners drive pricing down, so everybody wins. It, so the so what ends up happening is we evolve through. You wouldn't uh, two hundred years ago, three hundred years ago, a lot of the stuff we take for granted for uh, today, our lifespan included we didn't have um and and that's a result of 
every single thing in our world is really an idea first. And those ideas compete for, for, for value. And those, that, that, that competition and where labor and capital move to, to, to drive that competition, essentially to, to bet on the future value of that. Right. So, so in, in an entrepreneurial endeavor is, is making a bet against all other bets that this future, that I can create a bunch of value by doing it this way. And the only way you win is if, if other people believe, if other people choose your service or product and that, that, that makes, uh, that makes that bet or win and that advances humanity. It doesn't advance humanity. If you lose and you still win or you win and, and you're, and all, and you win at an order of magnitude that's ten times what you should, because pr- uh, pricing doesn't fall, because p- pricing stays up, and you you magnify a win, and everybody else is losing. So, um, so under sound money principles, those bets are the path to be able to a- advance technology. Now, I think what you're asking is, and, and uh, sorry if I've done a bad job of this, is under unsound principles, then all of those bets need to be put into government, into military complex, to be able to drive competition between uh, around the globe, to to win at somebody else's loss. And you have to because because if somebody else, like if you think about what's happening in China today, hypersonic weapons, or if you think about nuclear weapons and everything else, the what ends up happening is you get to that shelling point of competition where somebody doesn't invade you because they're worried about you pressing a button. And, um, and, and now they need nuclear weapons themselves, or they need the next iteration. They need space weapons to be able to countervail some other weapon. And so a lot of that in that military complex, it moves into their, um, and, and on that competition, all based on we have to win at somebody else's loss. Bitcoin changes that. And it changes it in such a powerful way that, that competition, global competition, it, it now enforces Bitcoin and, and the rules. And all of those ideas get put into the free market. And, um, and, and, and so, so you're that competition drives abundance is really what happens. Some of those, yeah, they would, they would come out in that environment. Fascinating. Fascinating. Thank you so much. So Jeff, um, yeah, um, just to close up, wrap up, um, what do you think is the trajectory? I mean, I, I'm pretty convinced in the next 10 years, we will see sort of a hyperbolic, uh, you know, on every level, uh, call it evolution, technological innovation, uh, sort of a hyper Bitcoinization. Where do you, if we zoom out a little bit, what's what's your perspective? What's your prediction? If it was, I, I besides the immediate concern I have of um, it's not ready, it's not integrated into society enough. Not enough people have it, and what that means, what that means for people who don't have it, um, is chilling. And what that means for uh, for governments that don't have it, for businesses that don't, people that don't have it, is chilling because they're going to be um, they're going to be further manipulated, and they won't know what's happening. That's the uh, and so uh, uh, apart from that, and that's going to happen at some point. Through it, it's happening now. If you talk about psyops, and it's happening now, and it's it's bound to happen um, a, a bunch worse. My hope is more people understand this and that you can have a gradual transition to the other side. But if you just said, if you just kind of what you're, what you're talking about, um, if you measure everything in Bitcoin, prices will come down forever. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Measuring it in in the unit of account of Bitcoin. This is, this is something which, uh, you know, we've been thinking about is that why don't we just take, what if we just take, you know, the absolute scarcity of Bitcoin and always measure it against the absolute scarcity? But I think it's not, it's not mature yet, right? The, the time has not come like to, 
because then we wouldn't be denominating constantly, you know, in price, 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 you know, like dollar, euro, whatever uh, one Bitcoin equals. But then we would just be thinking in purchasing power. Uh, the time will come, I guess. Yeah, and that's what, and that's what so many people are doing right now, and that's why they sell their Bitcoin. Yeah. Okay. Right. And 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 they gotta they they need to think about the kind of what we're what we're saying. In any event, I suspect pricing will everything else will come down forever against Bitcoin. And 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 if you understand what that means then you're going to accumulate it. You won't worry about pricing movements and pricing. You'll just, you'll use it as a time to accumulate um, over time. At time. All right, Jeff, that was awesome. Uh, thank you so much. Any final thoughts or, um, uh, you know, again, people should, should read your book. It's, it's fascinating. It's, it's, it's essential, I think, for, for, comprehend, for comprehending really the, the bigger picture. Yeah. Um, I would just say, if, if I, one final thought is, yeah. nothing has changed from that narrative, that, from what I wrote in the book. Right. If any, if anything, it's just accelerated on on both sides, and and it, it's it, it, that thesis laid out. We're living in a um, in these two systems that are colliding against each other, and they're going to grow further and further apart. That's what's happening. That's what's happening today. Some people, when I first wrote that. Um, questioned the us versus them chapter. Mm -hmm. I don't think they question it anymore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Because because you can see through that lens what humanity starts to do um, when uh, um, when when you tearing people apart. But it, but if I finish on one thing, you're part of you, Kevin, me, we are all part of the same system. And if it's easy to think it's everybody else. I mean, not us. So we just need to keep that in, 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 in check. Exactly. Yeah. This is why it's so more important than ever, you know, to start with oneself and uh, yeah, and just adapt to the new conditions, right? To the evolving yeah. conditions. Yeah. So uh, Jeff, thank you so much again for your time and, f you know, for all your work. And uh, yeah, uh, hope we're going to, you know, hopefully we can repeat this or eventually see one another in the very near future. <laughs> <laughs> Are you coming to Bitcoin 22? I'm, I'm, I'm going to try, but uh, I don't have a ticket yet because, you know, we don't know where we're going to be. Are we going to be in Austria? Or do we have to move? You know, so uh, I mean, we're already really seriously thinking about uh, packing our stuff, uh, just, you know, winning some time uh, until we can, you know, uh, have a, you know, make a solid so this decision where to go and where to establish ourselves. Because my, my girlfriend also has, you know, has a business. We have a baby. She's going to be one year old next month. And so it's still easy, I guess, you know, as, as long as the children are, are, are so young, it's, I guess, easier than if, if the kid like was like six or seven years old, our daughter. So <laughs> we'll see how this whole thing evolves. Got it. Okay, Jeff, thank you so much again. I'll see you soon. Okay. You bet. Thanks. All right. Take care. All right. Uh, buy the book by Jeff Booth, The Price of Tomorrow, Why Deflation is the Key to an Abundant Future. Follow him on Twitter. It, I, I've learned so much um, uh, with, uh, with Jeff and in all these conversations and there's tons of materials, other interviews, uh, podcasts uh, and presentations or the one he did, I think, recently in, in, in Vienna. Um, uh, and yeah, make sure you follow him and uh, share this video, share this interview uh, to, to as many friends and families and followers uh, you have. Um, and if you have any questions, suggestions, let me know. My name is Kevin Davani, the host of the Kevin Davani Connection Show, and I'll see you soon. Buy Bitcoin and uh, spread the word. All right, ready for evolution. Bye.